Hello, this is Joe Reinhardt, instructor for the CCNP Switch training series from TrainSignal, and here's a demonstration from the course. So now we want to talk about ports and interface types, because there are a variety of different switches that have different types of ports. Lots of times the copper ports are very similar, 10100, 10100, 1000, and so forth. When you get into some of the stackable and chassis-based switches, the interfaces can actually vary, and you want to understand and have a grasp of how those operate. Because again, we want to be able to prepare you for being able to pass the CCMP switch exam, but you also have to be able to recognize and operate in a real-world environment, production networks, and different installation types. So we're actually going to go through the stackable switch interface types, the chassis-based switch interface types, there's some overlap, some and then configurable interface types, and then port types, which go across a variety of the Cisco switching platforms. First, we just want to look a little bit at stackable switch interface types. And you see pictured here uh, several different models of, of the, what are called the stackable switches. There's obviously 10 100 1000 LAN interfaces, and I should say there are 10 100 LAN interfaces and 10 100 1000 LAN interfaces because some models are different. They have the auto MDIX crossover. They have RJ45 copper interfaces, and they are either layer 2 or layer 3 capable, depending on the model. One of the, I'll just call it the secret decoder ring of dealing with Cisco switches, especially in the stackables, is understanding what the model numbers mean. If you see a 2 as a leading character, it's a layer 2 switch, 2920, 2950, 2960, and so forth. If you see a 3... 3560, 3750, 3550, it means it's a layer 3 switch. So that's an easy way to just understand right off the bat what kind of switch you're dealing with. So picture to the left are three of the different stackable switch type models, the 2960, the 3560, and the 3750. And as you can see, picture to the right on all of these are small slots, and those are called SFP slots, small form factor pluggable, which is just basically a small module that's able to plug into there with a variety of different optics and and termination points. So there are a couple different types. There's a what's sometimes referred to as a copper SFP, which essentially just allows you to be able to use, a, for instance, a gigabit type of connection in one of these SFP slots. And you can see I've detailed the part numbers here. GLCT means T for twisted pair is copper. When you see SXMM, it's talking about optics, but it's talking about multi-mode fiber. There's two types of fiber. There's multi-mode and single mode, and they have a difference in operation and distance and those sorts of things beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about, but keep in mind of the differences. So there's long haul single mode fiber, and then there's single mode fiber. Again, it has to do with distances. It has to do with the strength of the laser and the type of light and those sorts of things. And there are all sorts of other types and media available for the SFP modules. For instance, I talked about the twin X type of connection. Those are also available as well. So Stackable switch interface types. Here you actually see pictured a number of different ones that we're talking about because we are also looking at 10 gigabit connectors. For instance, the two that are pictured, actually all these are 10 gigabit connectors. You had the X2, which is the model for the 3560E series, uh, tend to be wider. They don't look like the SFPs at all. There was the Zen Pack. The Zen Pack was essentially the first generation. 10 gigabit module, there'd usually only be four to a particular slot for the chassis based switches. Then you have the SFP plus, the optical modules. We talked a little bit about this. And pictured down here on the left, lower left, is an optical SFP. And pictured to the right is the twin X type of connector we were talking about. So you can see the part numbers here SR and LR, usually referring to uh, single mode short reach or LR long reach single mode and multi mode, respectively. Copper and uh, so forth and so on with the different types. There's X2s, there's SFPs, and so forth. So these are the types of connectors used for 10 gigabit connectivity. So as I mentioned before, there are the stackable type of switches, and then there are the chassis-based type of switches. The chassis-based, usually, the reason they're used is higher density. There's a variety of different number of slots and number of adapters and things like that available. Again, there's usually a lot more functionality associated with that. but just in general, in terms of interface types, you have the, again, the 10100 and the 10100 1000 type of LAN modules, again, RJ45 copper. Some have PoE support, some don't have PoE support, so a lot of that just has to have to do with whatever the requirements are. The, these particular interface modules that can use RJ45 copper, there are some that are just a line of SFPs where you put in the 
small SFP modules, and then their layer three or layer two, three, layer two or layer three capable model dependent. Most of the chassis based switches now are all layer three capable, but in the not so distant past, some of them did a lot less in terms of layer three. So similar types of connectors. You have your different uh, multi-mode, single mode, long haul, SFP type of connectors, SFP plus. So here's what I mentioned about the overlap, that some of the modules that you can use in the stackables and the modules that you can use in terms of the SFPs in the chassis based switches are going to be identical. 10 gigabit connectors, you notice they look exactly the same because they are. The X2, again, this is more of the stackable type of switches, but you have the others, the SFP plus, copper, the twin axe, and so forth. But these are just some different part numbers that you want to be familiar with. And again, there's a lot of similarity and crossover between the stackable and the chassis base when it comes to the modules like these. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.